Good morning, this is Brian Sykes with AI Explore. I'm excited to let you guys know that Midjourney has released the alpha version of Midjourney, which is we now have access to be able to prompt inside of Midjourney uh, and their website. And so here's what's kind of cool with this. There are some new things that are happening in this space. Uh, for one, in order to be <laughs> able to have access to the alpha, you've had to have had at least 10,000 renders. Um, maybe by the time this releases, uh, that number will be dropping. But anyway, I just wanted to walk you through some basic functioning inside of the alpha.midjourney.com website. Um, so it's a little bit different from how you've done it through Discord. And again, I'm not uh, a anti-Discord user. It, it was definitely a new space to kind of get used to things and uh, to learn that system. But for those who have never played in Discord, it was definitely one of those uh, challenging spaces to get something from. Okay, so I want to walk you through this alpha.midjourney.com website experience. Uh, to find out if you have access, you can actually go to the Discord, uh, your Midjourney account in Discord, and type in forward slash info, press return key, and it'll give you a render results and show you exactly how many renders you've actually done. Um, if you've crossed that threshold of 10,000, simply go to alpha.midjourney.com um, and you're gonna get inside of this site that you're seeing right here. You may have a different image set based off of when you arrive at the site. Where it starts us is in the explore tab. And so we're able to see uh, this whole host of images that other people have created. Okay, so what you'll notice is right away where here it's got the plus and it says imagine. So imagine is already inside of our prompting space. We do not have to type that inside of alpha.midjourney. Okay, so how do we actually engage in this space is we simply begin prompting. Uh, let's go with something straightforward and simple. Okay, so the prompt I'm gonna go with is woman wearing a Christmas outfit at a party, and I'll press the return key. Now, this is where it's a little bit different. You notice once I press the return key, it literally disappeared from the bar. But what you'll see is where it says create, right below explore, uh, it began to render. When I click on this, it's gonna open up images that have been created and this is actually my image list okay so these are things that i've been creating and what's happening uh, so it's showing me today here's my prompt and the results and i click on one of these and when i click on an image it then shows me a sliding element where i'm able to see all the individual shots and i can scroll through these rapidly okay so here's my woman wearing a christmas outfit at a christmas party and what you'll see is some of the parameters that have been set for this image. Where'd that come from and how do we adjust that? Well, let's actually take a look at this. I'm gonna go under here and you can see that there's some options beneath. Before we get there, let's actually take this exact same prompt. I'm gonna say use prompt uh, from the bar and it's gonna pull up in place, woman wearing a Christmas outfit at a party, aspect ratio of 16 to nine, style raw, stylize 600. Okay. so. Where that comes from is this little slider selection that's available right here in the top right corner. When I click on that, it's going to open up uh, a, a basically a set of parameters that I can set for my individual image. Now you can still type in dash dash AR169 and, and those kind of things inside your image, but this is sort of like the um, settings that you could do under mid journey uh, inside Discord. First is image size. It allows you to set your ratios and you can choose portrait, square, landscape, and you can actually move this little slider back and forth and it'll give you some variations to work from. You can also actually go in here and change the parameters yourself. So maybe you wanted to do a 21 to nine ratio. Uh, so you can get whatever prompt aspect ratio that you're interested in, you just have to type it in. Uh, next is going to be the aesthetic side of things. And you see that we have here stylization, weirdness, and variety. Okay, so first stylization, you're familiar with the dash dash stylize uh, they could, we can work from inside of Discord. And this is basically how much, like it says, stylize parameter influences how strongly the mid journey aesthetic is applied. Uh, so it's got us at 600 because this is what I used on some other renders I just did. Uh, the weirdness is the dash dash weird uh, parameter. And this is just one of those things that kind of adds some quirkiness to your rendered results. 
uh, and then the last is variety. And this is your chaos function. Um, so this is really interesting and it shows how varied the initial image grid is going to be. So the difference between those four images that are created. Uh, I'll, I can leave these just as they are or you could bump those up. It's easy enough to do with the slider. This is kind of a nice functional feature. Uh, also with model, we have standard or raw and I tend to like the raw effect uh, for a lot of renders inside of 5.2. And you'll notice that under version, we have all the versions available uh, that have ever been on Midjourney. So this goes all the way back. Um, we can take this all the way back to one uh, if we're going under standard. We have all the way back to one, Niji 5 and 4. When you choose raw, then it's only going to show me the options that are available with the raw functionality. So that stays in the 5 space, so Niji 5, 5, and 5.1 and 5.2 of standard mid-journey. Uh, then with options here on speed, this is based off of how much render time you want to apply to your thing. And of course, uh, if you're paying for your time, then relax mode is the easy way to go. Uh, there's also fast and turbo for the, the higher rate speed that I'm paying for. Uh, there's also stealth mode, which I currently have on. Uh, it just kind of keeps everything fast and away from the visibility of everybody else. When a render is made, so we could actually come in here and modify this prompt. Man wearing a Christmas outfit at a party. Um, in the street of New York. Okay, so leave everything there. I can go from this and just basically press return key. Now, as soon as I press the return key, notice create says zero of one, okay? So that also you'll see up at the top right corner, you're starting to see the rendered results showing up. And then once it's done, it turns to a solid one and we're able to kind of go up here and take a look at, uh, I like this guy. Uh, we're able to take a look at the images that were created with that prompt. And this is kind of cool. I wish I had hair like that again. This was what I looked like uh, my hair did when I was in high school and college. Um, but anyway, this is a really cool feature. Okay, so here's some other options. Reroll. You're familiar with this mindset. It basically takes that prompt and rerolls it. So you're going to get another variation of this. Here's something to be aware of is this is a very touch sensitive application. So I could accidentally click this a couple times and <laughs> I've actually now got two more re-rolls happening uh, right away. So just be aware that this thing moves quickly and it's very, very responsive. Um, you've got very, uh, there's some interesting things here. You've got under very, be sure and choose this little corner here because you've got very and you can choose strong, subtle and remix. Now what you'll notice that you're not getting right here is the ability to go and do a very region that is not currently available. Uh, there's a possibility that we'll be able to click up here eventually and choose open in Discord, but Discord URL is not available. So this is something to be aware of. It's gonna probably happen, but it's not yet there connected. Um, still, we've got a great functionality going on. Uh, we have the ability to do upscale. There's still 2X and 4X for each of the images that you have. Uh, and then we have underneath the more tab, we can pan with up, down, left, and right. Uh, also the zoom out feature. Notice that there is only 1.5x and 2x. There's not the zoom with variability where you can choose to modify that number. Uh, use image is where I can literally take this image and prompt with it. So it comes over and it's now a functioning image. Uh, so this is kind of a neat way to engage with your prompting. And it's letting me know that this is happening. Create five of six. So this is rendering out. It's using this photo as a reference. Now you could actually go in and add a dash dash IW and then a number following. Uh, so this is image weight. It affects how much uh, weight is being applied to the image that's being created. So this was the image that was being referenced. Um, and you can see this guy here. And this is applying that style Christmas party 1970s and gotta love the hair. Uh, so this is really kind of fun. Okay, as you're also working with this, you can rate what you like about an image. Um, kind of give it a this is horrible, I'm furious to absolutely love what you're doing. 
The other thing that's really kind of cool is under the Explore tab, we can see what other people have created. Uh, and this is kind of a neat way to learn. I've always recommended uh, for those who are in the mid-journey space to take a look at what other people are creating. And the beauty of this is because we have access, we can literally click on something and see the prompt that they used to create something. This is interesting. We're able to actually look at prompts and look at the visuals that are created and be inspired from these things. Uh, so let me go back to explore on the big level. And as you're going through these things and you find something that's like really fascinating and you, you love what's going on with that, we can use that as a prompt base and actually re-roll uh, and come up with our own. I really like what's happening with this image. And it says 1970s dark fantasy paperback book, cover art Dungeons and Dragons style illustration of a order of treasure hunters approaching a dungeon entrance. And we've got a name in here, uh, several different artists, film grain, pulpy, far perspective, no sunset, aspect ratio two to three. Okay, I can actually rework with this. And so I can click on use prompt and it pulls up everything that was in that existing prompt. Here's the beauty is they've already done something that created an image that's really cool. So I can take that prompt base and then I can go and modify. So I love the idea of 1970s dark fantasy, but what if I took a different approach? What if I did uh, a 1960s retro sci-fi paperback book cover um i don't mind the dungeons and dragons style but i'm actually going to remove retro futurism style all right and we're going to take away a few things to make it more interesting here for what i'm doing robotic treasure hunters approaching a an alien dungeon entrance perfect now with each of these, we're able to kind of get a neat perspective on what in the world's happening uh, with our, our prompting, and then we can kind of go from here. Simply rerun that, and you'll see under Create, six of seven, it's getting ready to produce something. Uh, it'll be spitting out an image in just a second, and this is what's so much fun with working with Midjourney and engaging in this space is we're able to kind of get a look. <laughs> this is interesting. So we got a guy playing a guitar. Not quite sure how that works, but... This is really the fun thing of, with working with the artwork is to get an idea um, and get some inspiration for ideas of creativity that we can explore from. Awesome. I kind of like this, this set. Orange is my favorite color and that put in this dystopian kind of environment uh, is really, really engaging. I wanted to point out that besides being able to One more feature I want to point out is the ability to import an image. Now you've already seen where we were able to render or re-render existing images that either somebody else has created or that we've actually created in our own prompting. But we can also click on this little button up here and you can see that images that you've uploaded can be accessed or we can choose a file and drop it here. So literally we can uh, grab an image and so since I've already got one that I've already uploaded, this is the Court Street Grocery in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm gonna reference that image. So it drops into place and I can say, I want it to be a, Okay, so I've gotten my basic settings in place. This is gonna be a loose watercolor rendering of the Brooklyn based Court Street Grocer. Um, and casual fluid, wintertime setting, snow. Okay, we can adjust our settings, whatever we want them to be, and I will leave everything just as it is and simply render it. It's letting me know that this is being created. And so you see, I've kind of played around with this already. While this is rendering, I wanna show you something. This set right here, notice I've added an image weight of two. Now that's done with the dash dash IW2. You have a range of zero to two with you, when you're working with 5.2 of Midjourney. Uh, and so this basically influences how much weight is applied to the reference image that you're using inside the prompt. Um, so what you're seeing is the color, uh, that gray concrete surround and the basic structure uh, is more in play when you're referencing that with a heavier image weight. 
And now these are the ones without an image weight applied and it takes a little more variability in what it's creating. Now you're starting to see hints of cold in winter time uh, in some of these images because I told it to be snow. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Again, this is the ability to pull in an image and reference it inside of Midjourney Alpha and how you can do that with the plus sign. All right, so here we go. This is the fun thing of Midjourney working inside of the alpha.midjourney.com. Uh, if you have that 10,000 render limit already passed, uh, then I highly recommend that you jump in and explore. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, enjoy. Bye, guys.